Hi, I'm Dr. Joel Hunter, and I'm an ophthalmologist. And you know what I noticed? There are not a lot of good videos on the internet on how to do a refraction. So I said to myself, we should make one. The following is a video on how to perform a manifest refraction in order to get the perfect pair of glasses. To figure out someone's prescription for glasses, we need a four-opter. And this is a four-opter. It was invented a hundred years ago, and it's so good at figuring out a glasses prescription that we still haven't figured out a way to do it better. Over the next few minutes, we're going to look at what it takes to use a four-opter to do a refraction. And that means turning knobs and dials to transform these lenses into the exact lenses your patient needs for a perfect pair of glasses. This only works if the setup is set up right. The patient's head needs to be even, and their eyes have to be looking through the middle of these openings. People have different sized heads, so the distance between the eyes varies, and that's called the IPD, or the interpupillary distance. And you're turning this knob to get the right IPD so their eyes are centered. It'll usually be a number between 55 and 65 millimeters. We're only checking one eye at a time, so you'll have to occlude the other. Luckily, this dial has a setting marked OC for occlude because that's what it does. And by the way, almost the only thing you'll ever use this dial for is to open it or to close it. That's open or occlude each eye as you need. Every glasses prescription has three parts to it. The first is the spherical power, and that describes the amount of hyperopia or myopia. The second one is the axis of astigmatism, and that's the direction that the astigmatism is oriented between 1 and 180. And the last one is the amount of astigmatism. It's also called the cylindrical power, and that just simply describes how much astigmatism is there. These last two are in the category of cylinder, which is the word we use to talk about astigmatism when we're doing a refraction. It's different than sphere, and it doesn't have anything to do with how we fix astigmatism. All of this correction is measured in a unit called diopters, and the units you find on the dials are always referring to diopters. They're always in quarter steps, and those quarters are quarters of a diopter. First up, and it'll always be first when you're doing a refraction, is the sphere. If your patient's myopic, then their glasses will make things look smaller. And if they're hyperopic, then their glasses will make things look bigger. So we'll start with zero, and we'll say better one or better two. And it's helpful to stick with one or two the whole time. That way you don't end up counting higher and higher and confusing everyone, including yourself. One is the number you're at, and two is the new choice. Make it big steps to start if you know they're pretty blurry. Usually a whole diopter at a time. Four of these quarter clicks will save you a lot of talking and testing to narrow in. We're going from big changes to get close to tiny incremental changes to fine tune. Once two, choice two, isn't making things better anymore, you can change to quarter diopter steps and see if small changes make things even sharper. When the image isn't getting any clearer, we're done here. We can move on to finding the axis of astigmatism. If your patient has any astigmatism at all, it's going to be at a certain axis, and that axis will be able to be found by using even a small amount of astigmatism correction. That means even if your patient has something like four diopters of astigmatism, you can still find the axis using only a small amount of that power, because that's where they'll like the correction best. So that's why we always use only a half diopter of power to fish out the astigmatism axis. When we're fishing for astigmatism, we're assuming that having a half a diopter of correction close to the axis where the patient has astigmatism will look better than not having that half a diopter there. And that means we only need to check the major landmarks of a circle. That's 0, 45, 90, and 135 degrees. At each of these landmarks, we'll say better 1 or better 2. And 1 will be 0 power. And two will be a half a diopter of power there. And if one's better, well, then we move on to the next landmark. Now, if one's better every time at each of those four landmarks, hooray! Your patient doesn't have any astigmatism. You're done with your refraction because you've corrected their only problem, which was simple myopia or hyperopia. Now, if they pick two at any point, then that means we have a catch on our fishing trip for astigmatism. It means they have some astigmatism somewhere near that axis. And now, we must fine-tune that axis. Just like with spherical power before, we go from big coarse changes down to fine-tuning. Now, with axis of astigmatism, we've found where it is in general, and we fine-tune to find the exact degree of astigmatism. And for fine-tuning the axis of astigmatism, we use this very impressive-looking device called the Jackson Cross. We're finding the axis, so we need to align the axis of the Jackson Cross wheel with the axis 
of our main cylinder axis dial. If the Jackson cross is turned wrong, none of this will work, so you gotta make sure it's right. There will be a click. We're using a minus cylinder four opter here because most four opters are minus cylinder. On these four opters, the red dot means minus and the white dot means add. For this, when we're trying to find the axis of astigmatism, it's the red dot that we will be chasing. How? We will flip this Jackson cross lens and ask better one or better two. For this, we don't care about the number they pick. We care about where the red dot is when they pick that number. Wherever the red dot is, we want to move the axis towards it. Follow the red. We're trying to find the exact axis of astigmatism, and that's going to be when choice one and two are equal. They may be equally good, they may be equally bad, depending on how optimistic or pessimistic your patient is, but they will be equal. Flipping that dial doesn't make any difference at all. We don't have any red dot to follow, and now we have found the exact axis of their astigmatism. Now that we found the axis, our job is to find the amount of cylinder, the cylindrical power. This is how much astigmatism your patient has. Now you can use the Jackson cross to do this, but a lot of times it's more harm than help, and so I recommend not using the Jackson cross. Instead, you can use the actual knob that dials in cylindrical power. What you want to do is pick a letter on a line that's relatively easy for them to read. For instance, if they're easily reading 2020, then a letter on the 2025 or 2030 line works best. And that letter happens to be the letter D. That's the best letter for figuring out how much astigmatism your patient has. So now we go back to saying better one or better two. One is where we're starting. Two is a half a diopter more cylinder power. As they pick two, you move up and then check again, better one or two. When you hear hesitation, that's when you've found the general range of cylindrical power they have. Almost always, your patient will pick to have a little bit more cylinder correction, and so you have to be careful with this. If you only listen for two, you'll keep climbing and climbing in how much cylindrical correction there is. When you hear that hesitation and they say, mm, two, that's when you want to stop and start fine tuning. And you can move down to quarter steps. And you can even test their vision on a smaller line to see if it's any improvement with more cylindrical power. You're almost done. Let's finalize it. It helps to go back and do one last thing with spherical power. To make sure that the lenses you've added haven't changed anything, this test is called clicks to blur. And we're looking for the specific amount of clicks it takes to make the 2020 line absolutely impossible to read. And so you'll show the 2020 line and you'll ask the patient to tell you when they can no longer decipher any of the letters at all on that line. Not when it's blurry, not when they can barely do it, but when it's absolutely impossible. Then add power to the sphere one click, one quarter diopter at a time. The correct number of clicks that should blur a 2020 line to absolutely impossible is three clicks. There should be three clicks to blur. If there are more, then you've accidentally over minus the patient. You should increase the minus by three clicks from wherever it becomes impossible and see if they can read the 2020 line perfectly. They almost always will be able to. On to the recap. Level the foropter and ensure the patient is comfortable. Occlude the left eye. Determine the sphere, starting with whole diopter jumps, and then fine tune with quarter diopter steps. Once the image isn't getting clearer, move along. Determine the cylinder axis by using a small amount of power at each 45 degree landmark. When the patient prefers the increased power, they likely have astigmatism near that axis. Fine tune the axis with the Jackson cross. Align the Jackson cross wheel with the cylinder axis dial. Make sure to listen for the click. Then you'll be flipping the Jackson cross and chasing the red. Determine the amount of cylinder using half diopter steps and then fine tune with quarter diopter steps. And finally, three clicks to blur. Add quarter diopter steps of plus power until the 2020 line is impossible to read. This should take three clicks. And that's it, we've done it. And because you've avoided over minusing your patient, you enter into the ranks of the titans of refraction. And that's it. That's how you prescribe a pair of glasses using a foropter. That's called a manifest refraction. I hope this video was helpful to you and I hope you can use the information to help your patients.